Hello and welcome to Unbounded Growth, a podcast that challenges you to grow and become a better version of yourself. My name is Mark Allen, and together with my friend Adam, we share thoughts and ideas from the books that we read and how they enhance our personal growth and development. We also host other readers and leaders. We learn from the experiences through our discussions. Our episodes air every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for listening in, and let's grow together. Unbounded Growth. Hello and welcome to Unbounded Growth. Good morning. My name is Mark Allen Muteba. I'm your host here with my friend and co-host Adam Shebindu. Thank you for joining us to the Unbounded Growth. This is episode number two. It's our second season. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing a lot better. They're taking off my spleen tomorrow. I cannot tell you how excited I am. It's just been, you know, 10 days being on crutches and not even be able to to get my tea on my own. You know, it's just, it's just been uh, something, something new, something uh, unusual. It, it was weird. Yeah, definitely. It's not something you want to get used to. <laughs> Absolutely not. And, and, you know, it's so funny. For the first time, I think, in, in more than 10 years, I spent two weeks within the house. I, I did not go outside. So ever wow. since ever since I left the hospital after surgery, I've just been, you know, back home, not not doing her lot. All right, we, we're going to get started. And uh today today episode may be uh, shorter than an hour, but we are going to cover all the points that we uh we plan on covering today. We've been talking about atomic habits, uh James Clear's book. Uh we we are learning how to create better habits, how to perpetuate your habit. If you've been struggling with anything, whether it's weight loss or your diet or exercising or studying more, or starting to read a book or even starting to write a book, you know, we just clear gives practical steps, you know, one, two, three on how you can build better habits and actually perpetuate your habit so that you you can you can you can live the life you want the life that you want to achieve and in the last few weeks here the last three weeks the last three episodes that we talked about we uh we talked about the surprising power of atomic habits we talked about how to shape how habits shape your identity we also went ahead and talked about how to build better habits in four simple steps we talked about that last week if you haven't listened to the episode from last week you can check us out and listen to the episode of last week and then we also talk about we finished up last week talking about the man who didn't look right how you can identify by uh, triggering by knowing the uh, the habits how you can know the cues the rewards you know the response and all those things how those play a role into building your habits and then we started talking about the first law the first law of habits creation is making it obvious that's when we talked about the man who didn't look right the next step we're, talking, we're going to talk about today, and, and I think is one of the keys in, in building your habits. I think even uh, BJ Falk that Jeff Clear talks about here in, in the fifth chapter, he talks about some of the research that BJ Falk did, and he wrote a whole book about it, BJ Falk in Tiny Habits, where how do you build habits by incorporating them in your current routine? And that's what we'll be talking about today. We, we're talking about uh, one thing that uh, James... Uh, BJ Fogg likes to call the motivation molly. Why is motivation not your problem? You know, it's so many times we, we say, okay, it's just the lack of motivation. I'm not motivated enough. Motivation, yes, is important in order for you to do anything. You can't do anything if you don't have motivation. That's just, just the way your brain works. If your motivation is at zero, you cannot do anything. But even with 1% motivation, if you have the right format, you can actually uh, do something. And lastly, we are going to talk about... Uh, uh, chapter six, that would be our uh, motivation. And maybe, maybe if we have enough time toward the end, we talk about chapter seven, the secret to self-control. All right, let's dive in. Chapter five, the best way to build a habit. I actually like the way he introduces this chapter with the story. And I mean, do, do you remember that story? Yeah, um, he talked about um, the, a few group, one group that, um, you know, that was motivated and another group that was actually not no no not not completely mot motivated mm -hmm. and he's talking about um a researcher a research group that's in britain was over yeah. in, in the great britain mm -hmm. that's uh one like one group um you know they just told them to just track the exercise mm -hmm. like how much they exercise and the other group received the motivation mm. and then they had a another basically another third group um and this group 
also received the same the same presentation or same everything, mm -hmm. but they had all of them received the equal amount of motivation. And then they, they also asked them to like write a specific plan. That was what was specific about the third group. They say, okay, on top of the motivation, we included the rating or in your case, you can say the YouTube video that you watched that, that <laughs> proved to you that you could become everything that you want within a night. That doesn't work, you know. And, and the third group, they, they gave them, they, tell, they asked them to, to take practical steps, such as, you know, I will do this on this day at this time, you know, uh, location and time. Those, those were the two things, the two key, uh, key components that were, that were asked, they were asked to, to complete. And now the result, that's, this was the most interesting part. The first and the second group. So the first group, as Adam said, were only asked to track their habit, how often they were doing it. So they asked them to exercise, right? To exercise once, once a week for the next two weeks, once a day for the next two weeks, and just track it. If you exercise, you track it. If you don't exercise, you don't track it, right? And now, as Adam said again, the second group was more of the motivation group. Now, on top of tracking their habit, they gave them, you know, I'll say in this case, a YouTube video. They gave them, you know, the good speech. I don't know if you've seen those motivational <laughs> video, Adam. I know <laughs> Adam has a problem with Vader's. <laughs> <laughs> you know those those videos that make you believe like you can move the the earth with, with one finger. <laughs> yeah, those are those are just basically the they are some away from science. I, I'm a scientist, so I, I tend to be very objective, right? Compared to a lot of um, whatever everybody else can believe. So right. it's, uh, my work is very objective. I I I deal with achievable, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I make I make smart goals. <laughs> 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 All right, so the second group, Adam would definitely fit in that group. So the second group was more about the motivation group. They gave them more motivation. But the third group, on top of the presentation, on top of the benefit of exercising, they also told them to write down this statement. During the next week, I will partake in 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on this day, in bracket, the day and the time. Now, the results were more shocking because the first and the second group were almost about the same amount of people that exercise they said 20 uh, 35 to 38 percent of those people in the first and second group exercise which means the first group did not receive any motivation but they still did as well as the people that received the motivation so motivation is not the problem but the third group the people who are in the third control group 91 percent of them exercised for the next two weeks 91 percent committed kept their commitment. And why was that so? It's because of what James Clear calls here, the implementation intention, which says that if you plan beforehand, it, it, it's a plan that you take beforehand about where and when your habit will be executed. So whatever is it that you're trying to do, the implementation intention, it's about intending to do what you plan to do at a specific time and specific place. And we shall join back Adam when he talks about smart goals. You know, a goal that is 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 measurable. What what is the S stand for again? I always forget that. I think specific. It's specific. specific. Yeah. Specific, yeah, measurable, specific. Achievable, yeah, measurable, and, and uh measurable. yeah. Um oh, and yeah. time, time, time bound. The T is the time bound. Yeah, you know. time bound. And and so, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And this this part of the this actually this chapter is what pushed me to actually go deeper into this book when i started reading it mm -hmm. um this chapter five where uh how to it can help you in both ways it, it can help you create good habits and make ha bad habit go away yeah and um actually this entire law actually it's very first law mm -hmm. the, the law when he's talking about our cue and the very first law mm -hmm. of um of habits mm -hmm. habits changes uh, when I had problems, and I think I shared this before, when I had problems sleeping, mm. because I created a habit and I convinced myself that sleeping is just, you know, it's just a commodity. It's not as <laughs> as important right. as 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 it is. Um, and and again, this is an advice: just don't believe like that. Don't think <laughs> that sleep is not important. You can survive without eating for. I mean, Jesus went for a forty days. Yeah, you can do that, but you cannot go more than ten days without sleeping. sleeping. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Mm -hmm. You cannot. You will die. So mm -hmm. I had a I had an issue. I was not sleeping for a while, and um, one thing 
that I made sure and I made it very, very specific about this specific chapter is the fact that I started locating where I do stuff mm. and when I do those stuff. Mm. So when do I go to bed? And of course, I'll go to my bedroom and I'll go on my bed. But when do I go there? <laughs> and it became very specific. You, you know what's funny about what you're saying? <laughs> I believe, and you can get me wrong, and and I would like you to comment, or if you're listening to on YouTube or you're listening to or whatever platform you're using, or comment on our Instagram page. How many of us have a specific sleeping time? Most of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us I mean, don't. I, I'm guilty. Us. I'm, I'm still <laughs> trying to work on it. I believe 90% of the people that are listening to us, we do not have a specific hour where you say at 11 p.m., that's my sleep time, you know. Most of us like you just sleep when sleep comes. When sleep comes, <laughs> yeah, that's actually something that. Yeah, actually, I just I was hundred percent like that. For me, it was mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, we we'll go to bed at two, wake up at, at literally five or six. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, because I, I, I was measuring my sleep based on business, right? So like, um, I work in Congo, I work here, and I'm like, okay, what are the good times mm-hmm. where I can be going to sleep, and especially right now when I'm daylight saving time, mm. where Okay, I can, it was, okay, it was really good because I know that if I go to bed around 2 a.m., I have received my final reports from Congo, or my initial reports, because there the day started at at 7 a.m., which here was still like 11 p.m. So I will go and I'll wake up like like 5.30, and around that time, I'm receiving the closing reports Mm -hmm. um, from Congo, and at the same time, I, I can also, you know, get ready to, to go to work here. And to me, that was well, that was the normal. Mm. But this formula where um, James Clear is putting it very clearly, the people who make a specific plan for when and where they will perform a new habit mm-hmm. are more likely to follow through. Mm. That's happened to me. Mm. My older apartment, and I think uh, what actually even messed up my whole schedule of habits was um, was changing locations and so on, and I have to adapt to all these changes. Yes. But environment is such a huge impact, and I think he talked about yeah, it. Yeah, we talked about it in about chapter probably, 7. Yes. We probably want to take it. Mm. Where and when I perform everything mm. was very specific. Mm. I had, a, on my couch, I had a specific position when I'm watching basketball, in a very specific position when I'm reading a book. Mm. On the couch, same couch, and a different corner of the couch, I'm here when I'm reading I'm, I'm, I'm reading a book and I'm here when I'm watching basketball. Very yeah. different. And I like that you, you mentioned that because uh, when James Clear talks about environment, he talks about location. And then toward the end, he says, well, you don't have, if you don't have enough space in your location, you're a student, you live in a one bedroom or you live just in the studio, you know, you can have, as Adam says, some position. Say, okay, this is my reading position. This is my working position. This is my sleeping position. This is my phone, Instagram scrolling position. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's what I did. Uh, and and I, had, I was very intentional about it. I was telling myself that by 11.30, I should be in bed. Mm-hmm. And I would get home. I'll try to get home as, at, at, at the time, it was not as, as busy as, as I am right now when it comes to my PhD work. Mm-hmm. But... I was, um, I could get home at nine. I would come and of course I'm, I'm a huge, um, Warriors fan for basketball. So I don't, I try not to miss a Warriors game. I mean, <laughs> lately we've been losing a lot. I mean, we'll be, we, we lost six in a row and then we won today. So I was All really right. good. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so that, so I would come and I would try not to miss my game. I will finish watching my game. I'll open my 15, 30 minutes of reading and mm-hmm. whenever I'm done with that, I would, and I, I based exactly on this book, exactly what James Clear is putting it here. Mm. I made a plan for it. Mm-hmm. And I made a location and a time that I am reading until 11.30, I will go to bed. And when I go to bed, and then I, this I think that uh, uh, we will talk about it later, mm. but when I would take my phone, I'll put it in the living room and, and, and so on. So it's, um, it's so important. And then he said that, he said many people think they lack motivation when they they really lack clarity. what they really lack is clarity. Yeah, it's so important when when it's clear when you can you can set up your locations and mm. you can make a plan for what you're trying to achieve at the personal level. And I'm not trying to talk about you know plans that hey I want to be a millionaire. Of course I want to be a millionaire, but 
the plan here is to work on yourself and to improve your habits mm -hmm. in such a way that those habits can work in your favor, as we said in the very first episode. Absolutely. So this, um, this part here is, is, is so important. And he puts a formula, a clear formula, and I think he got this from... Um, um, a BJ Fogg. Oh, for, from BJ Fogg. Mm -hmm. He said, a formula is clear. You just say, I will. Mm -hmm. You put a behavior there. At, you put a time. Mm -hmm. In, put a location. For example, meditation. I will meditate for one minute at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. in my kitchen. Mm. You put it like that. And actually, he think he probably, it, this is a previous episode where we said um, pick and call. Um, yeah, pick and call. Yeah, the previous episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So here, just say it out loud. Yep. Especially, especially and if you, a, before you do it, before you wake up in the morning, it also helps. So if, if, you know, uh, one, one thing, Adam, to, to add to what you're saying, to saying out loud, you know, you can't say out loud something that's not written, you know, and you can't write it down in the morning. You can, but you know, how much more convenient will it be to write it down in the morning compared to writing it out before you go to bed, you commit it to your memory. So when you wake up in the morning, you just read out everything that you committed that you're going to say, that you're going to do. For example, you wake up and you say, uh, I will I will meditate for one minute in my kitchen after uh, I drink water. Right, once you said it out loud, as as we talked about pointing and calling, the chances of you doing it increases by more than fifty percent. That's true, and uh, this it's, this actually can be taken as funny. Hmm. Uh, when I was in high school, a lot of um, there's 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 this power of of confession of calling things out of mm -hmm. just saying things. Mm. You can speak things into existence by saying them out loud. Okay. I used to, I, I used to have a habit in high school where um, I used to challenge, I used to challenge my, my, my whole class and I would tell them that, Hey, whatever, whatever question they can bring on an exam, I think I should be able to solve it because I'm that good. Mm. Of course I had haters who think that, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I may. I know they, they used to say that to think that I'm very prideful and whatever. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know that I was actually challenging, challenging my Yourself. inner self. Yep. Because I already, there's an embarrassment when you actually get a zero. You tell me about it. You tell me about it. When you say, I'm, I'm going to write a book and then you don't publish it. <laughs> and you don't publish the book, actually. And I know for anyone who's actually listening, I have a, I have a book that is probably going to come out next month. Mm. Um, I have a book that I'm writing with my dad and on, on the conflict in Congo. That's it. If you're really interested in that, that would be really, it is something that I'm also using a lot of the stuff I, I, I learned on that atomic habits to actually put it, Absolutely. but I think I'm going to talk about it more, mm -hmm. more later, but it's, yeah. it's really going to be a really interesting book. That's we, we know some very detailed in that some interviewed my dad and my dad is, you know, a high rank officer in the army. He fought in that war for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So he knows some of those very, you know, details interesting about, details. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be coming out in English and in French, so it's going to be an interesting Absolutely. Uh, piece, piece to read. But yeah, so it's, um, there's that power of confession. Mm. When you call things out, like you say that, okay, if you want to exercise, say, I will exercise for one hour at 5 p.m. in my local gym. You call it out, you say clearly that you're going to do it. And if you can, as, as Mark say, write it. Like, mm -hmm. um, if you have a journal, mm. you write it down, you say that you will do it. And whenever you go back to it and you didn't do it, you actually feel bad about yourself. And that's actually going to push you push forward you to, do it more. to actually go ahead and do it uh, and do it the next time. And you know, um, Adam, and, something that you're mentioning yeah. about the, the power, the power of comp confession, which I, I want to return on, the power of confession will work for and against you. De depends on, on, on what you confess. I think I said that before, you know, sometimes like you make a mistake. I, I told y'all before that I, I grew up, I don't know, for some reason with some very low self-esteem. I thought I was not intelligent enough. I, I thought I was, ne I would never amount to anything. And, and guess what? Every time I made a mistake, guess what I said to myself? Damn you. 
And, 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 and I say that so continually, and we talked about this before, about how what you say consciously sometimes or most of the times we start translating into your subconscious and once it goes into your subconscious that's when we go back to chapter one where james clear was talking about being in uh not james clear <laughs> this is a book i'm reading which uh hyper focus by chris belly chris belly calls it the autopilot well, actually just bought that book <laughs> yeah it's, it's a great book you know chris belly calls it the the autopilot the, the, the steps that you do without thinking, it's like, it's so embedded in you that you no longer even think about it. They'll give you a question in school or they'll give you a question at work. And the first thought you have in mind, I'm not smart enough. And because that confession, the power of confession, because it can work for or against you, you have to be careful about what you confess. You have to be careful about what you listen to because you only confess the things that you continually listen to. And you have to be careful about the things that you put in your mind because what you put in your mind eventually will come out of your mouth. And I think, uh, Adam, uh, the, the first strategy, it was, it was called the implementation intention. And I, th I think it goes, secondly, to talk about this other strategy uh, it talks about stacking formula, the Dedero de effect, you know, the strategy that they use to, to increase sales. So uh, I, I like how, how, how you mentioned this. And there's a funny story, actually, <laughs> we tell about data science that I learned back, back in my days in, in my undergrad. It says that when you buy something in the store, they usually put associated things to the things that you bought so that you can also buy them. And 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 data <laughs> data has proven that you go to the store to buy a suit. Right next to the suit, there's some matching shoes. You know, <laughs> actually, actually, I, I'm gonna give you a tip over here on that on that specific thing, right? Yeah. Mm. When I was um, I, I was uh, we were actually talking earlier. I got certified in bus in, in business analytics and data mining. Yeah. So what we do actually in data mining, mm -hmm. we, we collect all the tra transactional Transaction. data, yeah. everything, everything that's our Walmart, for example. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, there's a rule that was created. There's a few, you know, so a few mathematicians that came up with a with association rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called, it's called the shopping, it, it, it called the shopping basket methods yeah. in, 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 in business analytics. Mm. What you do in the shopping basket method, you put association. Mm. The person who bought coffee is most likely going to buy a creamer. <laughs> then when you're in a store, you put the creamer and next coffee to coffee. next to each other. Mm -hmm. That's why you did not come there for a creamer. You came there to get coffee, coffee. but mm -hmm. you're going to be going home with, a, with coffee and creamer. And it's such a, a smart move that I think like um, a lot of maybe growing up in business in Africa, people did not really understand this yes. early enough. Yes. To actually be using the power of association, association. and it's mm -hmm. often people do not collect a lot of data, but this is uh, association is, is is huge, and I think he talk about it as a Diderot effect over here. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. he talks far, farther down. You you just jump guns here. He was actually talking about that that specific story about data science and the power of association. Actually, the story that you're telling about data science and business analytics, we we also had a similar story where back in the nineties. They, they noticed that everybody that was, going, was coming to the store, most people that were coming to the store to buy diapers were buying either wine or beer. And so they started putting <laughs> beer <laughs> right next to diaper. You know how weird it is? Like you go to a store, there's <laughs> diapers, and then right next to the diapers, there's beer. And actually my Walmart, my local Walmart still has beer, right? Literally right next to the diapers. And, and, and you go there because you did not come to buy the beer. You came to buy the diapers. But because the 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 the, the, uh, the beer right next to it, you just decide I'll just grab a box, and that's what Amazon uses today. You add yep, one thing to your car. <laughs> <laughs> you add one thing to your car, <laughs> and and today social no. media, social media have understood that. Yeah. That's that's why you have cookies and stuff like that. I actually have. I don't use Google. I use DuckDuckGo. You know, it doesn't track your data and stuff like that. Why? Because you'll be looking for one thing on the internet, especially if you live within the uh this developing countries like the United States, you know, Peru, France or China or whatever. They they have this thing where they call them cookies, right? Facebook, Google, all the big tech, Twitters. You will look for something on Facebook. You click on a video that was talking about Nike shoes. The next thing you know, everywhere you go on the web, you see Nike shoes. And guess what? Because you see that, and we, we probably talk about that in the love environment, because you see it, 
you are tempted to buy it. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and, and just a, put it in front of me long enough and I'll definitely click on the <laughs> on the buy button, you know. And that's 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 important. So it start talking about the second habit, which is behavior stacking. And that comes from that deterrent effect. You know, if we use that to advantage, you go to the store, you find a beautiful dress, and right next to the dress, there's a matching uh, handbag or a matching purse to it. You buy them together. You can do the same thing with your behavior, right? Now, this requires us to have, to be a little bit more proactive. In order for you to add to your current behavior, you have to know what are your current behaviors. And that's why we said a few weeks ago, it's important that you sit down and write down what are your current behaviors. You know, for example, every morning, I know I know my, my current behaviors. I wake up, as soon as I wake up, I leave my bedroom, I come to the office, brush my teeth, and I sit in front of the computer. Now, I don't turn on my computer. My computer is, is almost always on. The first thing I do, I pray. After praying, I know I read my Bible, I read a book. Uh, consult my journal to make sure that, you know, check all my appointments, making sure that I have everything on my calendar and all that. It's only after that that I turn on my computer for work. And how did I come to, to the point of doing that? It was by first understanding what was stressing me every morning. I was leaving the bedroom straight up in front of my computer, waking up to emails, waking up to, to news, waking up to everything that you can read. And sometimes, even this stress that we have sometimes, it's, it's just based on how you wake up. Protect your money. I always tell people, learn how to protect your money. So, behavior stacking. Adam. Yeah, the other thing that I just want to uh, put here as a comment mm. is that as we talked about the Dider effect mm. and, and why it's important and how connecting everything together mm -hmm. actually can lead to... to to success, mm -hmm. you know, a succession of good behavior or things that can be directly correlated mm -hmm. and you put them in the same basket mm -hmm. can actually work for you. So the idea here, kind of the key, the, the key is to tie your desired behavior into something you already do each day. Mm -hmm. And once you can get that, like something that I already, like for example, um, even a bad behavior of a good behavior. You can stack them together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a goal to accomplish the good behavior. Something mm. to accomplish the good behavior. So it can be it can be like, okay, I did my, my I checked my social media for 15 minutes. And then I do 15 push-ups. And then <laughs> yeah, and then I do 15 push-ups. Like, yeah, it's it can it can actually be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. But mm -hmm. you stack them together and they get things happen. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know. You can easily incorporate such thing in, in, in your routine. Like, for example, some examples that he gives here, he say, after I meditate for 60 seconds, I will write my to-do list for the day. Mm. Simple. Mm -hmm. Simple. And if it gets overwhelming, reward yourself. Like, one thing that's actually tried, and, and, and I, still, I still do it, is um, after I read, um, uh, after I read uh, Brian Tracy's book, Eat That Frog, um, once after I read Eat the Frog, what I used to do, I used to take my uh, by 90 minutes mm. of focusing. Yeah. And after the 90 minutes, I would tell myself, after I focus for 90 minutes, I'll get on Twitter. Yep. Mm -hmm. For 15 minutes. Mm. And and I did that. And I, I still did not miss out on anything on Twitter, honestly. Like I didn't miss out on Twitter. I didn't miss out on any of the Instagram and, and, I mean, and whatever. It, it's so, crazy. Yeah. What, what you're saying is so crazy because I remember one time uh, I decided to quit Facebook. I did not delete my account. I just stopped using it. You know, I, I, I had mechanisms such as I could not access Facebook on my personal computer. I made it hard on my phone. I deleted the application so that every time I have to log into Facebook, I actually have to tap in my username and password, which was painful. And after a while, after two months or so, I stopped using Facebook. Guess what? Three months later, I came back to 200 some notification and there was nothing I missed. There's yeah. literally nothing <laughs> I missed, you know? So sometimes there's just that fever of, oh my God, I'm not, I've, I haven't been on Instagram for 10 minutes. What am I missing? You're not missing anything. That's just the reality. No, you really are not. You mm. really are not missing anything. So stacking those, uh, 
putting those together, stacking your good behavior, mm. or even stacking a, ba a, a bad behavior to a good behavior, mm. at least when you're getting started. Mm. I'm not saying, of course, you're going to start, as we talk about how you, you know, how you change your behavior, how you replace your bad behavior with, with good, good behavior, behavior and mm. so on. Uh, and then we can we can talk about it more. But as you get started, mm -hmm. the one thing that can work is also associating something that is really highly positive mm -hmm. with something that is somewhat negative mm -hmm. in such a way that you are still because the reason why we do stuff is because we try to get satisfied. And he, we, yes. he, he talked about it. Yes. The we we try to get satisfied. We, 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 we're yeah, so if you're not mm -hmm. getting if you're not getting any satisfaction you really are not mm -hmm. you really are not um you are not really reaching or you, are, you you cannot keep it up right. if you are not getting satisfied mm -hmm. um with with something and and he you know and he talked about it that way and he, he repeats again like the first law of behavior change is to make it obvious mm -hmm. yep like all these strategies all these strategies that we just talked about, <clears throat> strategies like implementation, intentions, and habit stacking, are among the most practical way, as he says, mm. to create obvious cues for your habits and design a clear plan for when and where to take action. And remember, the science of how habits work, there's the cue, there is the craving, there's the response and finally the reward. So that, as Eden was saying, every habit that you have right now can become the cue that will trigger the habit chain. Yeah, and we can we can move forward to the, to, to the, to next, the next chapter. chapter yeah. Just just a, a quick reminder. Oh. So the, the two most important things that you have to remember here, habits happen when you have a time and a location. I will do this a bit at this time, at this location. And you need to write it down. The second thing is that pairing your good habit, the implementation formula, I will do behavior this, at this time, at this location, and then habit stacking, you know, after brushing my teeth, then I'll do this. If you want to stop using your phone, then, you know, buy the good old, uh, I mean, if you want to stop using your phone in bed, buy the good old alarm clock, you know, the, the little thing that rings and then you have to bang it on the head for, for, in order for it to stop. Move your phone away from your room. And that, we even talk about that in the next one, uh, environment matters. So chapter six here, James Clear talks about motivation is overrated, environment matters. I really like the story he uses to introduce <laughs> this chapter. And, and, I, and I think... Uh, uh, I use some of this strategy, funny story, Adam. Today, so I have this folder, a OneDrive folder that I've been using since, I believe, 2011, 2012. And there's a lot of document, a lot of things that I, I wrote in the past and a lot of ebooks that I read like 10 years ago that I just told them that I had different folders, the books that I'm reading, the books that I've read, the book that I'm yet to read. And today, for the first time, which maybe may be an, encourage for, an encouragement for someone to read more, I started reading, looking at some of the titles of the book that I read in the past. And some of them was like, man, did I read this book? And as soon as I open, I'll see some of the highlights. And I realized that my behaviors, my beliefs, my, the, way, the way I carry myself in society over the last 10 years has been, a lot, has been shaped a lot by the books that I've read by the tapes that I've listened to, by the people that I've connected to. So it's important what you read and, and things like that. So the way it start, it start this, this story here, it said there was a doctor in Massachusetts. She was a PCP and she said, you know, I could change the way people eat and drink in this hospital without saying a word to anybody. And people are like, man, that's, that's a crazy idea. How are you going to do that? And she started bringing all this implementation in the cafeteria. She redesigned the way the whole cafeteria was. She took the soda vending machine. She put it right far in the corner. And she brought back the, the water vending machine a little closer. Oh. She changed the way she was putting the chairs. She put some healthy salad a little bit close, closer to, to, to the entrance of the cafeteria. And as a consequence, the soda sales decreased by 11.4%. And then the water sales increase by 25%. That's ridiculous. And you, you start understanding about the study went to, to showing that your environment 
matters. What you do, oh, yeah. that's it. It makes uh, a funny. huge difference. Um, I think, I think, I think today I actually saw on TikTok. I, 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 I got on TikTok about a month ago. And uh, today I was just scrolling through TikTok and I saw this one TikTok video. There's this guy where they, um, they gave him, they cover his eyes. Mm-hmm. And then they made him test a Pepsi and a Coke. Mm. And they asked him, which one do you like? <laughs> he picked the Pepsi. Mm. And then they unfolded his eyes. Yeah. When they unfolded him, they asked him again, between the Coke and the Pepsi, which one would you pick? Mm. You pick the Coke. He tested them again <laughs> and picked the Coke. <laughs> So, oh, that's so funny. you can see so you can you, you can you can you can see in terms of behavior change mm. in terms of behavior change how environment how oh all the environmental cues mm. actually become so important and he got the research here in 19, uh, 1936 by psychologist Kurt um, Lewin mm-hmm. he wrote an equation and this for my, my, my mathematician will, will love it that behavior is a function of the person in their environment mm. so p is a fun b is a function of p and e mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is a i think to me that's kind of the most important mm. equation that there is because that is true whatever it is that we do mm-hmm. is the direct function of the type of environment that we've set up mm. if your environment is good enough for you to sleep mm-hmm. You fall asleep. You go to sleep. Mm. You even suffer, of course. And, and, I'm, and I'm not, um, I'm not pushing aside people who struggle sleeping and, and due to anxiety and many other mm. problems like health problems. But sleeping, it's something that your body needs, mm-hmm. and it's something that your body can easily get used to. Right. If you, if 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 you're like me and you're having issues sleeping. And not because, I mean, at the beginning, I was giving myself an excuse that, hey, I'm not sleeping just because I am working. It's so important for me to work. I'm trying to push this thing. But then it just became a, a bad habit that I had a hard time literally, like, changing. Kind of got addicted and, to it. Yeah, I, very, very much. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I actually did, I also even made the very expensive choices. I actually looked at the type of environment where I was actually sleeping well. Mm-hmm. When I was traveling full time, I was living at hotels. Mm. Some of the best hotels, so my sleeping conditions were like perfect. Mm. So I would get in there, the pillow is amazing, the bed is great, uh, you know, everything around is great. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would easily sleep at the hotel. Mm. But when I'm home, I'm barely sleeping. Mm-hmm. Because at home, the environment I had already associated with work and everything right, else. Right. So what did I do? I actually changed. I I, I got a new bed. Mm. I got a new pillow. I, I looked at what the quality of the pillow they're having at the hotel that I'm not having at home. Mm-hmm. I bought those pillows. Changed the bed sheets. Changed everything. My my bed. I tried to have the quality of the bed that is the same quality as the one that I slept at at the hotel. Mm. I put my environment together. I arrange, arrange everything intentionally. And directly, it, um, it really paid off. And he gave a great example here, actually, mm-hmm. uh, where the example of soda that, that you talked about. Yes. Um, he, say, he, made, he, he made one, one important thing. Mm. He said people drink bad lights because it is very, um, it is in, the, in every bar. Yes. Visit Starbucks. Because mm-hmm. it's on every, every corner. corner. Mm-hmm. We like to think that we are in control. We not. If we choose water <laughs> over soda, we assume it is because we wanted to do so. Mm-hmm. The truth, however, is that is, is, is that many of the actions we take each day are shaped not by purpose but by purposeful drive. Mm. and choice but by the most obvious Mm -hmm. options that we can actually see and perceive Mm. so if you design 
your environment mm -hmm. make everything so easy and so obvious mm. you will feel of course in charge and when you feel in charge you actually are led to get things done and actually accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish exactly i mean it, it it's so it's so crucial i think there's a few more examples it give here it gives here at the beginning of the book which personally have helped me a lot so when i came when i came to the united states uh, for some reason my metabolism was really high you know i was drinking a soda every day every morning every evening i was drinking soda i never get a pound and and that lasted for for four years and then at some point things changed I just started, you know, putting on weight that I didn't want to put on. And eventually, you know, I started really getting more disciplined about, hey, I can't eat this. I cannot eat that. I can do this. I cannot do that. And one of the things that I struggled with the most was sodas. And the way for me to solve my addiction, my quote unquote, I won't call that an addiction, but my dependence on sodas, I stopped buying them, you know. So every time I open the fridge, there's nothing but water. Guess what? If you're thirsty, you're going to get some water. But if you walk by your kitchen counter and then there is some cookies just sitting there looking at you, guess what? You're going to grab one. If you, 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 don't, you don't want to drink and you drive by a bar where you used to drink all the time, guess what? You're going to want to get in the bar and drink again. If you don't want to smoke and then you keep a pack of cigarettes in your house, guess what? You are going to smoke again. So it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter what you're trying to control or not control. If you're not careful about the way you design your environment, about the way you design the, your workplace, either it will lead you to stress or it will lead you to productivity. I always tell my plan D that my wife that, you know, when when she see, she sees my desk clustered, sometimes it, it represents the state of my life. I feel like there's just a lot going on in my life, in my head, and I'm not, I'm focusing on too many things. When I truly want to focus, I clear my desk. That's the first thing I always do. I'll clear my desk. I'll clear the office. I'll make it like, look like the place where I want to focus. And it's funny when, when I was doing, uh, so I'm also a writer. So I do a lot of writings. And when I was doing a lot of creative writing, right now I'm just doing book summaries and stuff like that. When I was doing creative writing where I have, I had to think and, and to put words. I remember the, the library. Now, for those of you familiar with Dallas, the DFW area, is the TCC Tarrant County College Southeast Library. They have a beautiful library that has a beautiful look on nature and, and, and you know, and, and the water and the river. So it's like you are outside in nature without the bugs and all that. So you can see everything in nature without <laughs> without the weather. <laughs> I, I hate the weather outside. When it's cold, it's too cold. When it's hot, it's too hot. Like it's always yeah. funny for me to, to work outside. But inside, I could have that. And for some reason, every time I walk into the library, I had something in mind to write. I started, my brain started associating the library with my writing abilities or with the ideas. So it's always important to design the way that you live, the way, the place where you are, and to start creating those associations in your brain. Like if your bedroom is and, uh, a place to sleep, you know, like I remember before, before, before I got married and I'm, you know, my, my bedroom was my office. I, I literally had my table sitting right to my desk. And I already mentioned that I almost never turn off my computer. Guess what? At some point when I started struggling with sleep, I realized that that was my biggest problem. So at night against my will, I started shutting off all my computer, turning off all my monitors and sleeping in bed. And my bedroom was so dark that I couldn't even see my hand. And eventually my sleep pattern started improving. Right now I have one rule, no TV, no computer in the bedroom. At least, you know, I'm in a position where yes, it, it's possible for me, but when it wasn't possible, then I'll put the computers and things in a place where I won't see them and I won't do them to create that separation. Yeah. And I just want to, I just want to read here and I want to mention some, just to piggyback to what you say, mm. some of what James Clear is saying here. He's saying the most powerful of all human sensory abilities, however, is vision. Mm -hmm. The human body has about 11 million sensory receptors. Mm. Approximately 10 million of those are dedicated to sight. Some experts estimate that half of the brain, brain's resources are used on vision. 
given that we are more dependent on vision than a, on any other sense, it should come as no surprise that visual cues are the greatest catalyst of our behavior. Mm. For this reason, a small change in what you see can lead to a big shift in what you do. As a result, you can imagine how important it is to live and work in an environment that are filled, in environments that are filled mm. with productive cues and devoid of unproductive ones. Mm -hmm. And that's what just Mark just mentioned. Mm. And now my favorite part of that uh, entire, I wanted just to give a context, but my favorite part of the, of that place is when he says, thankfully, there is good news in this respect. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be the victim of your environment. You can also be the architect of it. That is very important. As Mark said, mm -hmm. having, making sure that you have a clean desk when you're trying to work, making sure you can see everything, you can actually feel in control and in charge. Mm -hmm of whatever you are doing at work, you are in, in charge and in control of mm. when you sleep and how you sleep. Mm. And those small things that you can, you can put together that can um, actually make a tremendous difference, difference on, on, in, on your life and on your behavior overall. Because remember, mm. I'm, we won't stop emphasizing on this enough that you have to use your behavior or your habits in your favor. Because if you do not, you're going to be living a life by accident, mm -hmm. a life that you have no control over anything. You're going to be spending so many hours on TikTok. And at the end of the day, you're not getting paid mm -hmm. like most TikTokers are. Right. You're just there following Scrolling. and wasting your time. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and that's why, that's why, you know, <laughs> what, what you see. As, as Adam, uh, thank you for reading for reading that portion. I think that that was very crucial. When you realize that ninety percent of your sensors are dedicated to your sight, then you you are very careful about what you choose to see. So people stand on different on different end of the spectrum with this, right? But a few years ago, I, I struggled a lot with pornography. I, I really did, you know. And and based on my faith, my beliefs, you know, pornography is not right. And I've read and I've read I've read Christian authors. I've read uh, the people that are not Christians, and I've read psychologists. Pornography is not good for you. And and I don't know who this is for, but pornography is not good for you. If you're doing that, it will not help. It's not doing you any favor to your brain. And you can check that psychologically, scientifically, or spiritually. It is not good for you. So one of the strategies that I use was to make it harder for me. Of course, on top of prayers, sometimes it's like, oh, pray, 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 pray. But if you're praying and you're not taking any action, then your prayer won't do anything to you. On top of prayers, I had to put away anything that was bringing that temptation to me. I was very careful about what type of movies I watch. I watch action movies. Every time, like, you know, when you, you put Netflix, it usually tells you what type of movie it is, if he has sexual scenes and stuff like that. Every time I put on a movie and I see anything with nudity and sexuality, I just change the movie. I, I started being careful about the type of movies that I was watching. I started being careful about the type of shows, about the type of music that I was listening to. And that was something that helped me a lot to liberate me from, from that struggle that I felt like it was starting to take to take a little control of my life where you can't go to bed if you haven't, you haven't watched a pornographic movie or you can't do anything like that. You know. And so don't, don't be a victim, as Adam said. Do not allow yourself to be a victim of the environment. And it's because we are talking about reading here, personal development and growth. One of the things that you can improve, you can, you can do to improve your reading life, put your books in a place where you see them. Because, I mean, if your book is somewhere down there in your backpack and you haven't used your backpack in, in like, I don't know how many years, you just leave it there or your backpack for work or your purse, where you never see it, you are less likely to read it. As a matter of fact, Adam, Adam has been has been to our house. I almost have a book in every room. I have even in the restrooms, I have a book. 
you know, instead of going to the restrooms and using my phone, scrolling, scrolling, and scrolling, I go to the restroom and I sit down there for five minutes and I'm I'm reading a book, maybe a line, maybe a page, you know. I have a book in, on my table. I have a book in the living room. As a matter of fact, we we'll probably soon be adding books in the kitchen. Probably Plamidi will kick me out of this house. But, you know, <laughs> we, I try to put a book everywhere I can see it. And it actually encourages me and reminds me, hey, you are reading this book. You have to read this book. So that's one thing you can you, you can do. The other thing that's that's very important in reading books is that mind your environment. Do you have enough light while you're reading? You know, a lot of people, we don't realize how much light is important when you're reading. When you're reading and you don't have enough light, your vision gets tired quickly, and then you are not motivated to read anymore. Just increase the light in your environment and can actually encourage you to, to read more. So whatever is it that you are trying to achieve, does your environment encourage you to do that? You are trying to exercise more, but your, the last time you saw your, your running shoes was five years ago. You probably won't run more. But if you put your running shoes right in front of your door before you, or right next to your bed, if you sleep, for example, in, 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 your, in your training gear, in your gym gear, in the morning, you don't have to think about dressing up. As soon as you step down, your shoes are there, you put them on, you out, you out the door. So it's very important to, to, to manage and mind the type of environment that you're in. Yeah, and, and just to start wrapping, to just, to just kind of start winding this down here, mm -hmm. um, when he talks about environment, I want to make this clear. This is not about, okay, I have this many objects, I have this, this and this and that. No. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship that you have with that environment. Mm. For one person, it, it's so important. Don't, do not think about objects like, hey, I, my table is full of stuff. <laughs> or, or It can be. Yep. But what is the relationship that you have mm. with your desk mm -hmm. what the relationship that you have with even your phone mm -hmm. which environment are you creating what the relationship because for one person your couch can be the place where you you read before you go to sleep for mm -hmm. an hour yep but the other person netflix it's gonna be the place <laughs> where they are watching tv until tomorrow 5 a.m yes mm -hmm. so you have it's not really about the couch it's about the relationship mm. you create between yourself mm -hmm. and that couch. Mm. And that is, that, that is important. So when you are designing your environment, it's not that uh, you are moving things apart or, or no, it's, it's more of a, it cannot always be something very physical. Mm -hmm. It's something that it's mental to you. It's very personal to you mm. on your mind in such a way that Whenever you see that, it gives you a cue of what you are supposed to accomplish at that specific location. Mm. And really, to me, with sleeping, that's changed a lot. It's it changed a lot. Even just the way um, I started organizing myself before I, because now I'm in a new apartment, so I'm still trying to figure out which side is which and <laughs> where do I do what and, right. and, and, and so on. So, but... My, my, my previous location, I really, everything was very intentionally put together and intentionally built in such a way that I have these corners that whenever I'm there, my mind is thinking about reading. Mm. Whenever I'm here, my mind is thinking about watching basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that that actually helped me mm. improve, Im improve my behavior and, and make a difference in my own life. Mm. And you know, as, as Adam said, that that's that's pretty much you know how we we'll we'll be wrapping this up today. And, and I think we can take a minute just to introduce our chapter seven, where it talks about the secret of self control. And the secret of self control is is none else than controlling your environment. I'll tell you this for sure. I've I've, I've struggled with with a few things in my life, things, and I call them struggle because these are things I did not want to do but I found myself doing, right? I talked about pornography. The other thing that I struggle with, I was spending too much time on TV. I like, I like, I, I stopped watching TV shows because my biggest struggle was once I started, I won't stop until I'm done with the TV show. It was so bad that I'll literally 
call off work to stay home and finish the TV show that I started. Especially on Friday. I, I was, you know, I start my TV show on Thursday. It's Friday morning. I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not even close to be done with this. And I'll stay there and watch it. The power of self-control comes when you learn to control your environment. If I don't see ice cream, guess how many times ice cream will tempt me? Zero. If on my way to work, I can avoid something that tempts me, guess how many times that thing will tempt me? Most of the times, people think that, oh, it's just that because you're, you're overweight, you don't have enough discipline. It's not. Sometimes it's not about the discipline. Sometimes it's not about, it's not that you don't have enough self-control. No, sometimes it's that you put yourself in situations where you do not have enough willpower to resist it. You can be tempted by something you don't see. You can be tempted by something you don't have. And, and, and it's very crucial as we talk more about this uh, next episode. It's a very short chapter. It's actually only three or four pages. Just showing you how designing your environment for success can actually help you increase your self-control, increase the levels of self-control, taking the temptation away. You've been tempted by cookies, don't buy them. If, if, if it's in the house and, and you know, someone is, is buying them, ask politely, can we move these cookies in the corner of the kitchen? Don't just leave them like at the entrance of the house where, where, <laughs> where I come in and, and I'm trying not to eat a lot of cookies. So it's very important to, to design your environment. And we'll be, we be ending that. Uh, we'll be ending with that today. Adam and I were talking about something last week. We were planning a giveaway uh, for the month uh, of December, we, we definitely want to be to show our appreciation to to all the listeners, to all of y'all who have been with us since since the beginning and who are continuing to be with us. We have a few guests, uh, maybe one. We we probably get one or two before the end of the year, and and I can promise you, you do not want to miss those ones. So if you are listening to us on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any notification in the future. We are still working on our video and we should probably soon be, be having it. If you're on Instagram, uh, do not hesitate to follow us. We now have a quote that is posted every single day. So if you're just looking for some insight, you know, you're looking for some motivation, you're looking for something that can actually help you to journal, to think on, uh, go on our Instagram page and we, we you, you always find us there. You can follow also Adam on his particular page. I know you will learn a lot of stuff from there. The nerd, the cool nerd on, on TikTok. Uh, follow him out there. <laughs> I, you know, I, we're talking about temptation here. My best way to stay away from the temptation of social media is that I don't have them. I don't have an Instagram account. I don't have a TikTok account. I still use Facebook uh, once in a while, and I still use the good, good old ways of emails. Again, if you have any question, any concern, uh, do not hesitate to to uh, to to write to us at info at theunboundedgrowth.com. If you're listening to us on any pod, uh, podcasting platform, uh, subscribe. Uh, give us a like, share this podcast with the people you love. And next time we'll be continuing with the secret of self-control and we'll be getting into the second law, how to make your habit attractive, how to make your gym attractive, how to make drinking water attractive, how to make, you know, doing push-ups attractive. You can make it attractive. And if it's attractive enough to you, you can be sure enough that you do it. Adam, any closing remarks? Well, that's all we have. Uh, and really, really, I'm, I'm really excited for, uh, what what's coming next for Unbounded Growth and um, for our videos to come up and for our guests to come in and also for the giveaway. You know, it's um it's uh, the holiday season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Absolutely. So Unbounded Growth want to share with you all and share the love and the appreciation for the uh, half a year that we're going to be celebrating actually at the end of this year. So that's going to be really amazing from our first episode in June uh, all the way to today, having now our... Um, you know, going through and pushing um, all the way to the end of the year. So it's going to be really amazing and you don't want to miss that. And uh, stay tuned and stay with us through um, listening to us and really uh, sending, keep sending your comments and keep on subscribing to our Instagram pages, uh, Mark say. So thank you very much for tuning in today and God bless. And we truly appreciate you. God bless you. It's the Thanksgiving season. Uh, there is turkey, but what are you most grateful for? What are you most grateful for? We want to know that. Uh, start, learn to show appreciation for life and for all the good things that God has given you. God bless you and you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.